Joseph Hall's story is a tragic one. His case has brought up a complicated set of questions that have yet to be answered. What happens when a child is exposed to a life of such destruction? How should the justice system respond to this kind of tragic situation? In today's video, we will explore the tragic case of Joseph Hall and the questions that arise from it. We will look at how Joseph's upbringing shaped his life and his actions, and what his case says about the criminal justice system. Welcome or welcome back to Twisted Minds. My name is James, and today we're going to dive into a case where a small child's innocence was replaced by violence. Joseph was born on June 19, 2000, to Jeffrey Hall and his ex-wife Latika Neal in Riverside, California. Jeffrey raised his children Joseph and Shirley after his ex-wife lost custody owing to her neglect and erratic behavior. And after Neil, he had remarried and went on to have three more children. Jeffrey was a plumber and faced a lot of financial problems as he struggled to get a job during an economic downturn in California. Real estate was hit the most. He struggled to provide for such a huge family, but he had one place where he felt important and like a leader. He was a prominent figure in the white supremacist movement as he believed that his job loss and financial problems were because of Jews and non-whites taking up the jobs. He was the regional leader of the National Social Movement, or the NSM, also known as the Nazi Party. The National Socialist Movement became the largest neo-Nazi organization in the country, with 46 chapters in 20 states. In October 2009, Jeffrey Hall led a rally near a day labor site in Riverside. The people wore World War II era Nazi garments. Later, in an interview, Jeffrey said, they're proud of who they are, tired of white guilt being shoved on their kids and multiculturalism. They can't see any reason for it. Jeff would often hold meetings with members at his home in the presence of his kids. The meetings were full of all kinds of slogans against non-whites and other hate speech. Due to Jeff's joblessness, he had become increasingly violent with his son and his wife, Krista McCary. He would often beat them up. According to Joseph's stepmother, Krista, Jeffrey punished his son every day for being too loud or for getting in his way. He would punch and kick the little child several times in the back. So, what did Joseph's life look like? He was reportedly very aggressive and verbally abusive from a very young age. His behavior began to spiral out of control, so much so that Joseph had been expelled from six schools for harming students and teachers. At age five, Joseph had stabbed a teacher with a pencil during her first day in kindergarten and had also tried to strangle a teacher with a phone cord later. Joseph reportedly suffered from ADHD and after switching so many schools, eventually he had to be homeschooled. According to his grandmother, Joseph had been like this from the very beginning. While that might be true, the home's hateful atmosphere that included Jeff's regular violence with Joseph and the NSM meetings definitely added to Joseph's aggression. In fact, Joseph was exposed to drugs and alcohol even before he was born in his mother's womb. Letitia Neal reportedly consumed heroin, meth, LSD, marijuana, and alcohol when she was pregnant. And during childhood, Joseph had witnessed his father's discriminatory behavior on a regular basis. A young Joseph had no guidance, and the only example he had was a violent father who was promoting hate. Joseph Hall was a troubled child who had a history of violence and mental health issues. He began to display increasingly volatile behavior, perhaps due to his mental illnesses and his father's neo-Nazi beliefs. One simply couldn't imagine the events that would unfold next. This violent and hateful environment was unknowingly brewing a murderer. Jeffrey Hall was killed, and his own son Joseph was the killer. Just a few days before tragedy struck, Jeffrey Hall bragged to his NSM group about teaching his oldest son, Joseph, to use night vision equipment and to shoot a gun. Jeffrey had no idea that this very training would be used to kill him. On May 1st, 2011, 32-year-old Jeffrey returned home from a neo-Nazi gathering and was allegedly drunk. 
He slept on the couch. Later, during the wee hours, Joseph retrieved a revolver from his father's room and returned to the couch where Jeff was sleeping, where he fatally shot him in his head, behind his left ear at point-blank range. Upon hearing the gunshot, Hall's wife, Krista, woke up and rushed to the scene to see a profusely bleeding and unresponsive Jeff and Joseph with the revolver in his hand. Joseph said, I shot dad. She immediately called 911 and reported that Joseph had shot Jeff. My son shot my husband. I need an ambulance. He's bleeding. <laughs> How old is your son? Ten. How old is your son? Ten. Oh my God. Jeff was dead. According to reports and Joseph's statement, the night before his murder, Jeffrey Hall had threatened to remove all the smoke detectors and burn down the family's house while the family was sleeping. Was that what prompted a young Joseph to kill his father? The little boy knew that he had shot his father, but it's unclear whether he fully understood that he had done something wrong. While in the police car, Joseph had told the officers that he shot Jeffrey Hall because he had repeatedly beat him and other family members. Joseph was taken into custody for interrogation. During the interrogation, authorities found out that Child Protective Services had issued 23 reports of alleged abuse, neglect, and poor living conditions at Hall's residence. But according to court reports, these accusations didn't amount to anything. However, after Jeff's murder, when the police officers arrived at Hall's home, they found dirty clothes lying around and empty beer bottles all over the place. The bathroom had a pungent smell of urine, and the pillows, mattresses, and blankets were all soiled and dirty. There were no boundaries in that house. Weapons like the 357 Magnum Joseph used to murder Hall were easily accessible to the children. The revolver Joseph used to kill his father was recovered under Joseph's bed. He had hidden it there after killing Jeffrey. Reportedly, a 22 caliber rifle was also found in the garage leaning against a wall. There was also an unlocked cabinet that had some ammunition and many other weapons. It's not just about easy access to weapons. As if that wasn't bad enough, at just 10 years old, Joseph actually knew how to use these weapons. Jeffrey sometimes took Joseph to the Mexican border, where heavily armed members of the neo-Nazi group often patrolled to catch illegal immigrants. According to court reports, that's where Jeff taught his son how to shoot. It's crazy to see how Jeff had no sense of what to keep from his son. Instead, it seems like he gladly taught his son the art of inflicting violence. Joseph's interrogation lasted more than an hour. During the interrogation, 10-year-old Joseph was asked why he killed his father, to which he said he was motivated by an episode of Criminal Minds, where he saw a kid shoot his abusive father and did not face any consequences for it. Joseph also thought that his father wouldn't really die. He thought he would recover and that the two of them would eventually be able to reconcile. While interrogating the 10-year-old, the authorities quickly realized that he didn't actually understand the gravity of the situation or the depravity of his crime. There are a lot of mixed reactions to the way in which the interrogation was conducted. Although the crime was heinous, the fact also is that a 10-year-old can't be expected to understand the importance of the Miranda warning during interrogation. For those of you who don't know what a Miranda warning is, here's the exact wording. You have the right to remain silent and refuse to answer questions. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. We have all heard this before the authorities start interrogating any suspect or culprit. A 10-year-old boy will not understand this and can't really be expected to know the importance of staying silent in a situation like this. Because of this, Joseph went on answering whatever he was asked. He didn't know the consequences that would follow. Here's a part of what Joseph said. I wasn't really thinking about if he was going to die or get unconscious, he said. I just thought maybe he might learn a lesson. I was trying to get him to know how I feel when I get hurt. Then, maybe we could go back to being friends and start all over. This shows that the boy didn't really think murder 
but his mind only allowed him to understand the taking revenge part of it by hurting his father. Joseph was told enough to understand cause and effect action and consequence. According to court records, the defense team tried to raise this major issue during the trial. When Joseph was asked what you have the right to remain silent meant, he thought that it meant that he had the right to stay calm. When he was asked what anything you say will be used against you in a court of law meant, he didn't respond. When he was asked what you have the right to talk to a lawyer and have a lawyer with you meant, he couldn't explain it properly. Court records also note that a Riverside police detective who's in charge of this investigation did not read Miranda warnings to Joseph until about two minutes into the interrogation. After each sentence, the officer asked Joseph if he understood what it meant. However, Joseph, who was all of 10, couldn't understand anything properly, and the officer had to explain to him what the sentences meant each time. Another loophole in the interrogation was the role of Joseph's stepmother who was with him. When the detectives left the room for a break, after about 45 minutes of interrogating Joseph, the boy's stepmother was recorded, telling Joseph that he didn't have to talk to the officer if he didn't want to. She also added, but it's good that you told the truth. The stepmother's husband was murdered by his own son, Joseph. Why was she present during the interrogation? She had a conflict of interest, which could affect how she guided Joseph. And it so happened that ironically or not, Krista McCary, the stepmother, did become a prosecution witness against Joseph during the trial. The boy finally told the police how he picked up the revolver from his dad's room and shot him in the middle of the night. He was then arrested and taken to juvenile hall, while Jeffrey Hall's other four children were taken into protective custody. Joseph's stepmother Krista was also arrested later and charged with criminal storage of firearms and child neglect. Joan Patterson, Jeff's mother and Joseph's grandmother, was given temporary custody of the other four children. In an interview on 60 Minutes, she said that she wasn't surprised about Joseph killing his father. She had anticipated it because of how violent Joseph was and how Jeffrey was abusive toward him. But she didn't expect it to happen so soon. She thought it would happen when Joseph grew older. According to her, Jeff becoming a neo-Nazi had hastened it. Joseph's trial began in 2013, after he had already spent about 18 months in juvenile hall. It was a difficult task for Chief District Attorney Mike Socho, as Joseph was a young child and didn't only have age to his advantage in the case, but also had people's sympathy. And Jeffrey Hall being a neo-Nazi might have put the little boy slightly into the hero category for some people. Socho was moved too, as he hadn't ever tried a child before, especially not for murder. But because a murder is a murder, and a case is a case that has to be looked at as objectively as possible, Socho had to put across his points. According to Socho, Jeff's Nazism had nothing to do with the case. Socho said that Joseph would have shot his father even if he'd been a member of the Peace and Freedom Party. This implied that Joseph killed his father for his own reasons, not for some greater good or anything. Joseph, no matter how young, is in fact a murderer. The defense too had a very solid response. The defense, Matthew Hardy, cited Joseph's motives as being protective in nature. Joseph did what he did to save his family from Jeff's violence. He also insisted that Nazism can't be completely dismissed to this case and was relevant when it came to assessing Jeff's only son. According to him, Joseph's childhood environment and conditioning matter in this case. He emphasized that kids learn from their parents and when Jeff was talking about hate speech and Nazism at home, he became a role model for Joseph. Joseph showed no emotion. Socho played the 911 call made by Krista at 4.02 a.m. on that Sunday morning in 2011, where she said, my stepson shot my husband, he's bleeding. Hearing this call distressed Joseph a little bit in the courtroom. While both sides had strong arguments to make, the case was very, very difficult. Had it been an adult in place of Joseph, it would have been much easier, as an adult has an understanding of what's right and wrong, and no other major factors can defend a cold-blooded murder like this. But Joseph, being just 10 years old, gave the defense equal weight. Had an adult committed this crime, they would get 40 years to life in prison. But in the case of Joseph, what kind of a sentence can one expect? 
According to California law, Joseph can only be held until he turns 23. Eventually, after all sorts of arguments in court, and to much disappointment for a lot of people, Judge Leonard issued the sentence. Although Joseph was 13 at the time of the trial, and 10 at the time of committing the crime, the crime itself had a lot of weight, and so Joseph was convicted of second-degree murder in the killing of his father, Jeffrey Hall. He was sentenced to 40 years to life, but since he wasn't an adult, the sentence would actually be 10 years in a California juvenile facility. Joseph would be released when he was 23 years old. Here's what the judge had to say before handing out the sentence. I know some will be sad about my decision, and there may be some tears. That was the end of the case, but it wasn't the end of a fight for better rights and protection for children in such cases. Five years after Jeffrey Hall's death, California legislators introduced a bill that would provide children with some layer of protection from police interrogation. This new bill came into existence because of Joseph's case. Unlike some states, California doesn't have a law that requires young children to receive legal guidance from an attorney or a guardian before they're interrogated. This Senate Bill 1052 was introduced in February 2016 and could potentially affect hundreds of children like Joseph who enter the criminal justice system at a young age. According to the Senate Bill 1052, children younger than 18 years of age will first consult with an attorney or a legal guardian before being allowed to waive their Miranda rights and also before they're interrogated by authorities. Joseph was a mentally harassed child all throughout his childhood and lived with his abusive neo-Nazi father. But does it mean that killing someone is all right, even if he was just 10 years old at the time? Whether the sentencing was fair will always be debatable. While this case was tragic in many ways, it brought to light many things, like the Senate Bill 1052, which will at least provide better handling of such cases where everything from interrogation and trial to sentencing becomes challenging. Moreover, the case also throws light on identifying mental health problems in kids and assessing the environment children grow up in early on. Joseph was expelled from six schools for violent behavior before age 10. What steps did the parents or the school take to identify the problem and help? On the other hand, Jeffrey was a discriminatory person who was the leader of a neo-Nazi movement. He spread hatred and violence against others right in front of his son at home. What example was he setting for little Joseph? Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Joseph Hall, and why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos.